Free agency is right around the corner, so let's evaluate the players available and see who might be the best fit for the Eagles, too costly, or just a victim of circumstance, as well as look at some new additions and subtractions from the NFC East. What's up, it's your boy Centron coming back at you with another analysis video, and I kid you not, that's my real name. Top 101 NFL free agents of 2024 ranked by position. Which spots have most least depth? So let's see how that gonna rank out for us as well. All right, so we're gonna start at quarterback. Nothing really here to prioritize because it'll be the backup position that we're seeking out. But uh, Jacoby Brissett could be a good fill. You know, depends on the pricing, of course. And he's number two on this list for a reason. He's seen as more of a journeyman uh, at this point. You know, he can hold down the fort for, you know, a, a season if your starter goes down. But, you know, with that, he does come with a premium. So, I mean, will we be willing to pay that or roll with Marcus Mariota or see who else is out there? Eh, don't know. But I know none of these guys are coming to uh, the Eagles, especially not this guy. Could be, but I mean, you know, I don't think he's had a good, you know, uh, run here or had a good time here. So I don't think he would be entertained coming back. But some interesting names on the list. Now to a big one, running back. We know that the Eagles are needing at that position. They only have Gainwell under contract as of this moment. Boston Scott could be added, you know, as a returnee. We'll see if he's willing to come back as well as another guy we'll get to on the list. I mean, but first, let's address the headliner of the group, Saquon Barkley. Um, Man, it'd be a dream if we could get him into the offense, but he's most likely going to be too expensive. But his fit would be really nice. He um, has the speed, barring he can stay healthy, but he can uh, also uh, get the tough yards. And think about him not having to be the pivotal focus of an offense and coming into this one with A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith on the, uh, both sides of him would be a dream, but it's a dream that's uh, too pricey. Derrick Henry, just too much mileage. Um would be nice if you know you could use him as the uh, the battery ram but he him and the other guys are gonna get humbled in this market josh jacobs also has a nice skill set but he's i mean he's only had really one good i mean well great year but otherwise he's been injured and he wasn't the, hadn't didn't have the most imposing physical skill set to begin with so um would i take him on a on a pay cut yeah sure but he's probably gonna get more than even this guy here and um i much more prefer his skill set tony pollard i mean he's a lower priority but he still has um, some talent but familiarity with Kellen moore could be appealing but yeah i, I don't um he's not a phys physical back um he's a good 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 guy good receiver but i'm looking for a bigger guy if i if if i'm gonna bring him in the guy with familiarity deandre swift i prefer to bring him back if i'm gonna bring anybody in um from the free agency fray but he's young but he, he's he might get paid you know a little bit more than uh than philly's willing willing to shell out so don't think he's gonna be coming back unfortunately austin eckler no nah, the age and then he's a smaller back jackie Dobbins. Just the health, you know. This isn't the first time he's missing time. He could he could come on the cheap though, comparatively speaking to those other guys. Devin Singletary to small, and then my guy I want, AJ Dillon. Don't even know if he's on the Eagles radar, so realistically speaking, but he can be that that uh pound the rock back that we go to. And he has he can be somewhat of an outlet out of the backfield. Receiver. I'm only looking for a third guy, so you don't fit the bill, too expensive and old. You don't fit the bill because too expensive and you know you just you're slight of frame you're not gonna work on the inside you're the outside guy Gabe Davis actually be a good fit but too expensive um he's young can be productive especially with two you know he had Stefan Stefan Diggs he have two guys in Philly taking away the heat from him so he'd be able to thrive Curtis Samuel might be an interesting piece he's more of a uh, utility guy uh, but you know still has that that speed and he can play inside, outside. So sneaky, good fit, but you know, where's the money as well? I don't know. Darnell Mooney, two years removed from this campaign he did have, but you know, where's he now? And 
I think, you know, he's also young, so you, you might get paid a little bit more than we're wanting to. A, also a sneaky good fit at the number three spot. KJ Osborne, not too expensive, but uh, do they want to go with someone a little bit more well uh, well known? Because he's he's not... He's, he's been a good secret there in, in Minnesota, but you know, he's produced. Had, I think, three consecutive 600-yard seasons. So, I mean, it might be worth the bang of the buck. Your bang for your buck, anyways. Nah, Diva, too expensive. Uh, Tyler Boyd, another good fit. Um, he, he can play on the inside and outside as well. But the money, even though he is 29... Just might be a little bit too expensive. So, I mean, there's some good options to be had for the Eagles there. Some other guys uh, that I would suggest just for their versatility. On the low end, a Paris Campbell. Um, we also have, I uh, forget the name, the game breaker. The receiver, six foot four. Last play with the, the Panthers. Forgetting his name, but he's got some nice wheels. All right. Um, no, nah, I don't even think about it. Tight end, nothing here for us to see. If we didn't re-sign um, Albert O recently, I would say maybe take a look at him, but not that much to be had there. Tackle, we're not really going to go there. We have bookends already, and we're looking for depth, and they're just too expensive. Interior offensive line, we could go. Do you go with a younger guy or even a veteran you, that you can plug and play there? This would be, would be an option as right guard is a, a spot that we're looking for. Gonna be too expensive. Uh, I, I, I think, yeah, he's just, he has a market. So we're not looking for too much. I mean, I think just these guys are nice, but they're gonna command more than we're willing to pay. More than we can, um, it's more trouble than it's uh, worth to actually acquire them. We can just draft a guy if that's the case. Um, no, name I would say stands out on this list, Kevin Zeitler, the age, one year, hold up, or do you try someone like Runyon? I mean, like someone you can get on the low in the low, on the low end, as well as, you know, having to pay a low amount of money and still have some value there. But I think we mostly look for, the last time we did that was Brandon Brooks, Brooks and it worked out, but we haven't gone that option too, too many times. We just look to, uh, home grow our talent edge rusher we could dive into this market but i think he's gonna be too expensive 20 million mil a season is where he's setting the bar and yeah come on as is he um and then what do we do with our, our standing you know our guys that are standing there now bryce huff could be an option i think you could get paid um a lot less than he should and this guy as well, like if he's willing to be a third or fourth option, no, no, because I mean, but his his motor runs hot and cold. He just wasn't productive, as productive as we would have thought playing across from you know all pro like um, Joey Bosa. Sorry, Nick Bosa. Zarius would be a good backup option to have a veteran there. So name to keep a you know eye on. This is a guy that maybe could actually land and he played with Miami under the our current um D coordinator Vic Mangio jack of all trades yeah he can do he can do everything he can drop and rush a passer you know he was surprising in that effort so he might actually be a good fit um no I think he would be a good fit but you know just how much would never this is the name like he was coming off the bench why didn't he start of course Bill you know has to you know you have to ingratiate yourself to him and build up an, a certain amount of trust. Show that you can, you know, tr truly sort of show that you can do it. And, um, man, he, uh, you know, he has some potential, though. So this could be a sneaky good move for Howie and you could lock him in for, you know, longer duration and move one of our guys. If we trade Hassan Reddick, one of these guys on the list could definitely be highlighted as a guy to go to. Um... Yeah, I mean, he'd be, he'd be a good rotational piece. But, again, the price tag is young. Marcus Davenport could be had on the cheap. Um, and he's a guy he can get there, man. So, I mean, this would be worth a shot as well. So, it's just some interesting names. 
uh, you know, lower end, you know, similar to uh, this guy here, Zedarius, but something to keep in mind and, and uh, just to, you know, keep tabs on them. Leonard Floyd, gonna be too expensive, but um, yeah, he, he's he's a talent. But, you know, he's more trending towards the, you know, the downside. Our own guy, I think we bring him back on a one-year deal. And probably not. But, you know, Big Banjo might not look past him, so. Um, can't even afford him. Can't even afford him. The production hasn't matched the talent. We could bring him back if he's even willing, if he doesn't retire. And there's some other names in here that, you know, potentially a one-year guy in the rotation, you know, a younger guy. To fill out that fourth man spot, we're not looking for too much. We didn't know our top three guys basically kind of penciled in. Linebacker, pure linebacker, um, out, off the ball guys. Frankie Louvu, this could be a guy to target, you know, um, for how to say, okay, I finally upgraded the position. You guys shut up, you know. But, you know, he has some good tools. He can do it all. Um, maybe a lesser version of, uh, you know, some of the two top end talent. He, you know, somewhere in between. 10 and 15 probably is, you know, top linebackers in the league, but it'd be an upgrade. So could you really complain that much? You would have something to say though. I mean, and this would be the, you know, the dream guy to get isn't perfect. I admit that, but he's a pretty damn good player, a great player. And this guy is somewhere in between these two. So, um, but what do you have? He's coming with an injury. Yeah, he, he played last year, but you know, he's going to get even better being a year further removed. So, um, but the price tag, it's going to be expensive. Be good as a last-ditch option. Limited player, but, you know, for you know, a fixed role. C ball, get ball, C player, hit player. Yeah. Would be a really good guy to bring in as a cheaper option, but, you know, you might be done with cheaper stuff. Um, but, you know, like I said, he's not going to, above, he's not going to be the best. But, you know, he's going to give you some pretty damn uh, good quality snaps and in spots give you some great play but he has his limitations you know but pretty damn good uh option for to be a um, a limited option gonna be too expensive not as good as queen but um you like to have him in your linebacking core getting older but like the last last ditch option but still playing pretty good hasn't put it all together yet but you know um if he were to um i mean he still might be an ascending talent he hasn't maxed out, but you know he's um, a less perfect prospect. But uh, I would, I'd welcome him. Um, this could be a, another guy, um, a, a, a bargain to be had. Um, give you three downs, but he's not going to be spectacular. But he gets the job done, so could be interesting. Um, as well as this guy, trusted. Limited on the athletic spectrum, but um, Johnny on the spot, man, and he's in the right place, right time. Uh, don't really know, to be honest, but he sets the edge. Could be, um, you know, one of, well, I'd say he's on, he's, he's behind these guys. So, limited player. So. Um, cornerback, Kendall Fuller could be definitely an option if we go. <clears throat> he's not so young. I have to watch out for the Bradbury effect. <laughs> but um, I think he he could give you some quality snaps as a number two. So I wouldn't be mad if he brought him in. I just would hope that it'd be he'd be more of a breach guy. Uh, he's, he's old. Um, the slot guy, so we don't really need that. I mean, we need it, but not coming from a guy who's on the closer to the back nine than in the front of his career. Too, incons too inconsistent <clears throat> gap, but last priority. Christian Fulton. Mm. Yeah, he hasn't been as good as his tape um, in the past, but be worth a gamble. Journeyman at this point. Um, you sign him for the special teams, not for the uh, these actual position play. And underrated, but you know, you get what you get. He be worth a, uh, a look, kick the uh, kick the proverbial tires. We'll see, but I don't know, man. Um, kind of, I'm really 
I put him a step below because he's coming off that injury. If he wasn't, you'd put him a step above that, you know, um, trial period cornerback, but it's tough, man. Safety, I would definitely love to sign him to a long-term deal that fell through last year, but is he willing to even come come through the spot? You know, don't know. This guy, we've seen him you know, make plays. He picked Jalen off two times the last time we saw him. Um, I think he's, you know, pretty rangy, underrated guy. So I would love to have him on the squad, um, sign to a long-term deal. This guy as well, I like him. Light, but... There might be a place, I mean, there could be a place for him, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm torn on this one. This is a guy I really like. Um, underrated and ascending talent. We haven't seen the best uh, years of his football to be played. So if you want to, you know, take a gamble as well on production, go with this guy. Solid, but we have more of his, you know, him out there. Um... Mm. I mean, I don't know. He, I think he could also feel what we need, but he's more limited, um, athletically speaking. But he's, he's he's played solid. He's been in the right spot. Um, a joker. I would love to sign him, have him as a chess piece, a free range guy. I would love to to uh, to get in. So there's there's some depth there, more depth than I thought. Um, quality player, man. Um, I, I I think you know. We could we could find a place for him on our system. Don't know about him to be honest. And he's uh he's older, so you know. And uh that's all we have for the special teams. I mean the special teams. The guys they were not gonna go over special teams. All right, other news here. Avante Maddox was released by the Eagles today. Only thing I have to question this situation is uh on is was it a post June uh, one cut or a pre June one cut? So if we cut him with a pre-June uh, first designation, we only get $2 million. His salary was about $6 million, and then, um, I mean, yeah, the cap figure was about 9 So we would save about $2 million. Post-June, we get we save $7 million. So I, I hope it's the latter and not the former. We'll see. Um, but he could end up coming back because, you know, two sides could end up working out a deal. He wants to be here. Just, you know, the Eagles weren't going to pay him that salary to be here in 2024. That being said, you know, he still is a, uh, um, a slot guy. We have high, you know, high, um, we hold in high regard. Just couldn't say healthy. Um, but, you know, we can have some, potentially some guys slotting in there, in there. Isaiah Rogers, try him in the slot. He's been the outside guy, but, you know, we don't know. As well as draft, you know, some people that have inside, outside versatility. We'll see. But, um. It could get interesting, man. All right, Zach Ertz is back, just not in Eagles uniform. So he returns to the NFC East, but he'll be playing for his uh, former head coach in Arizona, Cliff Kingsbury, there in uh, Washington Commanders land. So he's back on a $5 million deal, the 22nd highest paid tight end. And, you know, it'll suck seeing him twice a year, but he's not the threat that he once was. It just the same sentimental, sentimental value of playing against you know a guy that you know you formerly loved helped us win the Super Bowl in 2017 2018 uh, Super Bowl. Um, yeah, man, I I, um, I like Zach 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 hurts Zach hurts, but I don't. This isn't a big you know deal, but you know why did he sign there? You know the money, knowing you know the the head coach. And, um, you know, I mean, uh, sorry, the head coach, the offensive coordinator, having, having that familiarity. Yeah, it, it, it sucks, but, you know, life goes on. All right, last thing we're going to get here today. Jason Kelsey shares some more details about his retirement decision. So he said, you know, it was a physical thing. You know, his, his body has been bothering him in recent years, his uh, elbow, fingers, um, knees. And he wasn't going to be able to play to the extent that he wanted to. And recovery would have taken longer, like so he would have seen his physical skills slip. Maybe, maybe not this season, um, but you know, and the build up in between, and wouldn't have been able to be himself. And there's no um, shame in bowing out when you know Father Time comes knocking on that door, as it does for every man. So he's confident in that, and yeah, man, it it, it sucks. I mean, that, that weighed heavily into the process, and he doesn't want to be a geriatric, 
he already is going to be to some extent, you know, walking around playing with his, you know, kids and hopefully, you know, their kids' kids. So um, I respect him on that front. Um, and he thinks we're going to be good this year. I, I, I do think that as well, um, given that we have a new offensive and defensive coordinator that can come in and um, help us right the ship on, on those, those sides. We, we weren't um, depleted of talent. It was just the, the coaching side of the things that, you know, was inadequate. Um, let's see what else he had to say. He thinks Cam Jerkins is going to be an excellent center or an you know, incredible guy. So, I mean, I agree. But, you know, it's not you and who's going to make those line calls. we got to figure that out. Some other things he uh, said was that um, he changed his technique after he blew out his knee. You know, he could never longer throw guys along. I mean, I didn't know the technical side of things back then, but it's crazy that he improved even with going through that, you know, hernia surgery, surgery uh, sports hernia, that he was never the same player physically, but the de dedication to the game and to his craft allowed him to have six of his seven um, Pro Bowls, all pro, I mean, the, I think all pros after the injury, it's just crazy. Um, and he, he thought about retiring um, partially, coming back in, you know, in case of emergency or playoffs, bro, be selfish, do that. He said you don't, he doesn't want to be, we implore you. Please keep your name on our reserve list. Stay in shape, bro, because we might need you. I'd be, I, of course, he's a, he's a legend. Who wouldn't be down for that? But anyways, let's get up out of here because you're not even listening. You're not even watching it, but it's all good. So I love talking about the Eagles and I love making these videos. So we're going to chunk the deuces. But as always, as always, it's Fly Eagles Fly and let's motherfucking go. Thanks for watching. Check me out at Centron, Centron Anime, Centron Life, or Centron Laughs, or other social media.